Okay. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Uh, I, it is my pleasure to be a moderator for today's seminar. I'm uh, Ma'ai Hisano, Associate Professor at the Graduate School of Interdisciplinary Information Studies at the University of Tokyo. Uh, today's event is organized by BAI Global Forum and supported by Beyond AI Initiative at the University of Tokyo. And I am delighted to have uh, welcome Dr. Lulu Shi uh, today. She will share with us uh, one of her most recent research uh, on AI and domestic work. And Dr. Shi is a postdoctoral post researcher at the Department of Sociology at the University of Oxford. And her research encompasses technology, education, work, and employment and organizations. And she is working also on the project called Domestic AI at Oxford, which she will explain more in detail in a minute. But in this project, Domestic AI, she focuses on the trans transformation of paid and unpaid work in the age of AI and robotics conducting cross-national research, and part of which is the, today's uh, focus of her talk. And she also leads a project funded by British Academy, which investigates how educational technology transforms education by exploring the social political context they are embedded in. So her work and her projects uh, encompasses the intersection of technology, society, culture, and gender. So now uh, I thank you, uh, Dr. Shi, for joining us today. And uh, without further ado, for you. Thank you Thank so you. much. Um, thank you so much for the invitation to talk here tonight. Um, I'm really excited. Um, and as uh, thank you for the very nice introduction. Um, and as uh, the introduction already mentioned, I'm working on uh, the project called Domestic AI. Um, and just before I start with the presentation, I'm just giving you a little bit of a background about what is domestic AI, what we are doing, so that you can have a better idea. And the presentation, presentation itself will then be on one particular study that we're doing in domestic AI. So, um, and I'm really looking forward to your questions, comments, um, that'll be really useful. Um, so just about the project Domestic AI, this is a collaboration project between Oxford University and Japanese universities. Uh, we have a couple of Japanese universities, which may I can share here. Um, it didn't work. Okay, yes. So just um, to show you the list of people, it's not just me <laughs> working on the project. Uh, we have a bunch of people on the UK side this is led by Professor Ekaterina Herzog um, and Professor Vili Letonvieta as the co I and me, we're the three people on the UK side at Oxford University. And the Japanese uh, PI is Professor Nobuko Nagase at Otonomitsu University. Um, and we also have Professor Yuji Ota, um, Dr. Yoshiko Shimada. Um, they're all at uh, Oshanomitsu universities and um, other group members include Professor Yoshiaki Omori, Dr. Professor Emiko Usui, Dr. Setsuya Fukuda, and Dr. Rikika, Rikia Matsukura. Um, so in the project, we are interested in understanding how technology can transform unpaid domestic work. That's the fundamental question that we're uh, interested in. And how we are approaching this is we try to understand the demand side and the supply side, and then also combining both sides together in order to do a future kind of a forecast. Um, and understanding the supply side, which is what I will talk about mainly today, is understanding what kind of technology uh, is likely to be here in the near future that we can use to do unpaid domestic work. And with that, we mean housework and care work, basically the kind of work that we do at home that uh, we call reproductive work. Um, and here, I will talk more about that. Basically, we um, forecast this based on technology experts' um, uh, knowledge and their forecast, and we will predict uh, automation scores. Um, and on the demand side, we're trying to understand well, if there's technology available, will this be used by people, by consumers, given um, the amount of price, given um, the amount of time that they can save? And then also, of course, cultural values, 
uh, we want, want to um, take that into account because it's not only about um, economic uh, economic metrics such as time and money availability, but also what do people think about using technology, for example, for uh, taking care of your children and uh, or elderly people. Um, so for those uh, both work packages, we are collecting data ourselves. And in the end, we want to combine those two sites. And also we want to use, uh, we're using time use data uh, in order to make predictions. So time use data, maybe some of you are familiar with, is the data set that uh, documents how people use time on a very granular level, on a 15 minutes or so level. So mm -hmm. that we know how people spend their time throughout the day. So with these data, then we can make um, simulations about how people uh, are likely to use time in the near future based on our predictions. So this is the entire kind of um, the project domestic AI. And um, we are in the middle of data collection for understanding the demand side. Um, so unfortunately, I cannot talk too much about that because we're still collecting data. But today I can present what we have um, that is understanding the supply side. So what kind of technology um, what is likely to be here in the near future? So, um, and just as a bit of a background for why we think this is important. Um, there is a lot of literature on the future of paid work. Um, so there is a lot of research on that. People are very much interested in understanding how we can use technology in the labor market, using automation to save labor. Um, and there is the term called technological unemployment, which basically means uh, using technology and um, doing automation. And by that, people can become unemployed because people can be uh, become redundant and replaced by technology. Um, there's a kind of a big fear in the society that is picked up by academics and also by the media, by policymakers. So there's a lot of um, research and also talk about this. However, there's not so much research on uh, technology and the future of unpaid work. And um, we think this is very important because if you look at data, uh, we know that in the UK, people spend about half of the time on total time of doing work, actually on unpaid work. So this 43% uh, means that in the UK, people spend about 43% of time of doing work on unpaid work. In Japan, this is a bit lower, it's 27%. Um, and this is mainly driven by the really long uh, working hours. So uh, very long working times in the labor market, but the time spent on doing housework is not, it, it's not that doesn't mean that people spend uh, less time on doing housework. Um, so this is the first contribution that we want to do with our project that is uh, including the discussion on unpaid work and technology. And the second contribution is that we want to also contextualize the experts prediction. Because what um, other studies have done, um, and at, just as an example here, a uh, Frey and Osman study on the future of paid work, which is a seminal study, study and then recited uh, and reused by a lot of other studies. Um, what they did is they predicted the future of paid work, that is how much work is likely to be automated in the labor market. And they reached this number 47% um, of uh, US on, uh, in employment. And what they did is uh, using very similar uh, methodology as we did is basically they conducted a workshop with engineers, with uh, tech experts and um, asking them, what do you think of this task is likely to be automated in the near future? And then aggregating all those tasks together, understanding whole occupations, whether whole occupations are likely to be automated. But what their study and also the following studies did is that they basically took the um, answers of the engineers and the tech experts as an ob objective fact, meaning that um, this 47%, this number is given as kind of a objective fact, this how much can be automated, 
But what is left in a black box is who are those people who gave uh, the responses? So who are the engineers? Why do they give these responses? So as social scientists, um, we're mostly social scientists in our teams, we think that um, how people make predictions is very much contingent based on their social economic background and also their, their context that they're situated in. Because we know that, um, for example, people's opinions and attitudes are very much influenced by their social standing, social positions. And we also know that knowledge itself is um, very much influenced and shaped by cultural values and norms and so on. So we think or our hypothesis is that is that even professional um, opinions and knowledge are shaped by those social uh, settings. So the second contribution that we want to make is that we want to know whether the prediction of future depends on the expert's background. Um, now a little bit to methodology uh, um, to make it easy to understand. Um, I have a, a graphic here. So what we did is we used, um, we applied Delphi survey um, and the strength of Delphi survey is that we can benefit from the um, strength in from uh, social or group interaction methods. Um, but at the same time, we can also avoid the uh, risks or the downside of group in interaction methods, which is that um, opinions are likely to be driven by dominant voices and have social biases. Um, but in Delphi, we can avoid that because um, the answers of the experts of, or of the respondents are anonymous for other, um, for other respondents. So we as researchers are the only ones who know who gave what kind of answer. So, but just to be a bit more concrete, what we did um, in the first step, we have, we conceptualized the survey. And in the survey, what we wanted to understand is, first of all, the um, degree of automation for housework and care work. And second of all, also the cost for the automation. So basically, it's those two questions, the degree of automation and cost of automation. Um, but then what we did is that because housework and care work is really broad, right? It's not just something that we do. So we ask for um, 17 different tasks. And those 17 different tasks are, are, we constructed these based on time use data. And time use data, again, is a, time, is a data set that we can know um, how people spend their time. So basically with those 17 tasks, we cover everything that people, or we try to cover everything what people do at home. Um, I will show you an example of the questions in the survey uh, to, to be less abstract. Um, that will be the next slide. But um, so in the first uh, step, we, we did this, the survey conceptualization. And then um, in total, we have two main rounds. In the first round, we contacted the experts that we identified um, and we sent out the survey. We asked them to participate and asked them to um, give their predictions for those 17 tasks, once for five years and then for 10 years. Um, we collected the answers and uh, aggregating this data, knowing what are the means, what, how do the distributions look like. And we are also very much interested in the extreme answers. Um, with extreme answers, I mean here uh, the outliers, for example, people giving extremely high, um, high uh, answers as high degree of automation or very high prices or extremely low automation or extremely low prices. So we want to know a little bit about the background and why they give those answers. Um, in, that's the interim round where we reach out to the extreme predictions or extreme respondents. Um, we try to understand that and we shared the results from the first round with the same experts in the second round. So the second round is basically exactly the same questions again, but we show the experts the uh, means and distributions of the first round and the explanations of the extreme answers. And in the second round, the experts 
they had the chance to revise their answers based on the answers they saw from the others. Um, but they could also not revise their answers. So that was open to them. And in the end um, of the second round, we saw that the predictions of the first round, they, they converged. So meaning that we had less of a distribution, we had more of a concentrated kind of a, um, answer bunches. That was the setup for the Delphi survey. And here is uh, how our sample looks like. It's, um, it's a Delphi survey, so we're not relying on a huge data set. In total, we have 65 um, experts, um, more in Japan, 36 Japanese experts, and uh, just under 30 in the UK. With those different, um, the two different countries, we want to compare whether experts in different markets would give different answers, different predictions. And we also try to have a balanced mix between male and female experts, um, because we are also very much interested in um, experts with different gender, whether they will predict different uh, futures. Uh, we have a bit more male experts than female experts, and this is mainly driven because the tech field is mainly dominated by male um, experts or uh, um, more men working in the area. Um, and uh, we also differentiate between the fields of their expertise. So they are all tech experts, but they may work in different fields. So. Uh, we have the three fields, academics, working in universities, um, like uh, basic research, and we also have people in R&D, and we have people working in business. Um, so those are the three areas. Now, this is just a screenshot or three screenshots of the survey uh, to give you a more um, concrete understanding of how we operationalized the, the questions. Um, so the, the example question is for cooking. Uh, so we ask, what do you think in the future, um, this is a second uh, screenshot down here, five years from now, what percentage of the time that currently goes into the task can be automated? And the expert can choose something between zero and 100%. Um, and the example is for cooking. We have 17 different tasks as mentioned. And because it may not be super clear how, what is this task exactly. So we draw the definitions, the task components from time use survey. And um, maybe just as an interesting point, we did this in UK and, and in Japan and time use um, survey or how, how the work is defined is different in the both settings, right? Um, so this is a UK example. This is what people understand under cooking. We also tell them um, how, how many people, how much time they usually spend on doing this task as a background information for the experts. And then the second question is uh, on cost. So um, how much do you think it will cost for this automation? And based on pilot, we learned that it's quite difficult to give really precise answers. This is the reason why we'll have this price buckets here. Um, and the results, uh, just a quick summary, is um, uh, five years we have some sort of a lower prediction. And the next 10 years we have um, just under 40% of automation is likely to be automated. Um, and this is really, so this is the contribution, the first contribution, because we were very much interested in uh, what, how automation looks like for unpaid domestic work. Um, but we are actually also very interested in uh, the, how does it look like for, by, by task, by the 17 tasks. Uh, I hope you can read what is um, what is in in the in the text, but if not, it's also okay. I can just talk you through. Um, so you can see this distribution. The highest automation was predicted for grocery shopping, 
uh, grocery shopping, like buying uh, buying food for cooking and so on. And this is um, maybe or is likely to be driven by because we already do a lot of online shopping, for example. So that's also some sort of uh, automation. Um, and in the lower corner here, we have uh, a lot of care work. Um, so for example, interactions with children, escorting children, uh, physical care for children, and so on, is predicted to be um, difficult to automate. And that uh, does also make sense because those are the tasks that involve high amount of um, emotional labor and um, emotional intelligence also. So these tasks are considered to be less easy to automate. And um, this next slide refers to the second contribution that we wanted to make with this project, which um, is unpacking who are the experts, what kind of predictions do they give. Um, and we were very much interested whether there's a uh, difference between the genders and also between countries. What we first did is we checked for whether male and female experts give different predictions and actually uh, we found there was no difference between female and um, male experts if we just differentiate by gender. And that was quite surprising because we know that um, the exposure to housework and care work is quite different between fem female and male, uh, but we didn't see anything. Um, so what we did next is to throw in another variable, which is country, because we know the gender um, distribution of uh, labor um, is quite different in the West and in the East, or in UK and in Japan in particular. So now with um, just two variables, we see that there are some significant differences between gender. So in Japan, there's a significant gender difference. In the UK, we also see significant gender differences. Um, so that's what this chart is trying to say. On the left hand side, we got the Japanese experts um, results and on the right hand side, we have the UK. And what is interesting here is that male and female experts um, predict differently or the difference between gender is different in the two countries. So in Japan, we can see that it's the female expert who predict a higher amount of automation. So 60, 26 versus 22%. And in the UK, it's the other way around. So in the UK, we can see that male experts are more optimistic, if you want, in terms of um, automation predictions. Um, and female experts have a lower prediction of automation. And um, we cannot say for sure why we observe this, this differences. Our hypothesis was actually that male experts would predict a higher degree of automation. Um, because from literature, we know that uh, men are in general more uh, optimistic in the sense of how much um, can be automated in comparison to, to women. Uh, we see that, however, only for the UK case. And in Japan, again, we are not entirely sure, but one of the possible explanation is that um, in Japan, uh, it, the housework is still predominantly carried out by females. So female women um, do take on the lion's share of housework and, and care work. And men, especially um, engineers and also people we interviewed here who are expert in technology, they tend to be more senior people. And it's very likely that they don't spend so much time on doing housework and have less, uh, therefore less exposure to housework. Um, and with less exposure, maybe also less knowledge about, about how you do housework and how much time you actually spend on that. Um, during some of the qualitative interview that we did, it was actually quite interesting. Um, some, it was during COVID and during COVID we all work from home and some of the male expert we interviewed said, oh, uh, we didn't know that my wife spent so much time on doing housework. Um, so there was a heavy underestimation of how much house, uh, how much time is uh, spent on um, doing housework. Um, and in the oh, so if we if you may remember, we also contacted the outliers of the extreme answers. Um, we asked them for the reasons why you gave the predictions. 
And what we saw um, anecdotally for the male experts, um, one of the Japanese male experts who gave a really low degree of automation said, um, I think uh, the cost will be so high, so we won't automate, automate it because it won't be worth uh, doing the automation. So therefore I predict a very low degree of automation. Um, and also anecdotally, we saw a, a female Japanese expert saying that, uh, yes, I think the cost may be very high, uh, but it will be worth it um, because it's very, it's, it's very, uh, the, the kind of housework may be very time consuming, very tiring. So despite a high cost, um, a female expert, because they have the per pressure to do this housework, may think this is worth it and therefore high degree of automation. So that kind of supported our hypothesis that depending on your social standing, your social economic background, even experts would uh, predict a different uh, future. Um, and that has that can shape their professional uh, predictions. And next, what we were also interested in, this is the last finding that I want to mention today is, uh, we did also find a different distribution of answers across different fields of expertise. Um, so this, you may remember, we um, have experts in three sub areas, the academics, the R&D people and business people. And the distribution um, is somehow different. So for the academics, um, or maybe let me just uh, talk you through how you read the chart. Uh, on the x-axis, you have the degree or percentage of estimated automatability, uh, ranging from zero, no automation, to 100% of automation of certain tasks. And on the y-axis, you have the percentage of experts giving, giving their uh, predictions. So the lower the bar means uh, the, the less uh, experts um, thinking that this specific uh, degree of automation will happen. Um, so now the, the distribution here for the academics, you can see um, there is actually quite a bunch of people thinking very high degree of automation, so close to 100%. And you cannot see that for any of the other uh, subgroups. Um, and R&D people, it's kind of a smooth bell curve. It, goes down after about 30, 40%, um, very low percentage of people thinking that there will be very high degree of automation. And for the business people, you see this kind of a sharp drop after around 50%. Um, and that could be interpreted as um, uncertainty about the future. So just to summarize the conclusions um, and the contributions of this study, um, first of all, we contributed to adding unpaid domestic work into the literature of work automation. Um, our prediction is around 27% uh, in the next five years and around 40% in the next 10 years. Um, and we also want to say that context really matters. We found differences between Japan and uh, UK. And we also found that experts' background in terms of their gender makes a difference and also in terms of which field um, they work in, that also um, matters. And uh, so that's, that's the conclusions for today. And um, I'm very looking forward to your questions and feedback. Uh, so thank you very much. Thank you.